All right, welcome back to the channel, everyone. I am Left Eye Ego, and uh, today we're going to be talking about uh, modern day storytelling. Uh, is it good? Is it bad? Or is it different? And for this one, because we were kind of expanding on some thoughts, I actually brought in who's going to be a recurring guest on the, on the channel, J -J -J Justin Ice, because he keeps it chill. I am here to keep it chill. Awesome. Doing good, doing good, doing good. So uh, I know we're uh, talking about all this, and I wanted to bring on Mr. Ice because he's uh, actually had a lot more knowledge of uh, the cinema. I know that he was big with watching movies in the 80s and 90s and even some of the modern-day movies. So he has seen it all, uh, good, bad, and things. different. <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely seen a few things. And, uh, oh, there we go. Practice, cool. Of everyone. <laughs> and as a practicing martial artist, I know he said he's seen the great kung fu movies, Bad kung fu movies and ones that were just different. So, I wanted to bring on a, uh, a another perspective on this while we talk about it. So, you know, the main thing is, you know, are we just old and crotchety now with these modern day movies? Are we just making fun of the fanboys at this point, or is it a little bit more nuanced than that? Um, before we start, I want to actually ask Mr. Ice what he's noticed that's changed with modern day storytelling over the last few years. How is it? change in things that you've noticed oh my 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 opinion because all justin nice has for you is opinions it's purely subjective baby i'm just bringing the subjection a lot of storytelling has become like i call vending machine storytelling and that means pop your quarters in get you get your little can of flavor and keep it moving um keep it moving and grooving uh, some have called this time period the age of the amateur, thanks to social media, and a lot of people who are not connected with big wig corporations are making some really interesting content, some pretty outstanding stuff from not just news, not just news. Um, you know, uh, Bat and the Sun have pretty much made feature length, I'm sorry, feature quality, like theater quality shorts, um, superhero beatdown, um, some of the animated work out of um, How It Should Have Ended. It's really good um, and hilarious. There's just a lot of people putting out a lot of content right now. So the age of the amateurs out there. So, you know, the big companies got to keep up with them. Um, our technology allows us to produce faster. And with amateurs producing faster and faster on phones and computers, the big guys got to got to keep up. They got to make they got to make high octane super stuff really, really, really fast. And so, I don't know. I think we're just in the age of just faster product, quicker, more consumable stuff. Okay. And then there's a part that we're probably not thinking about because what's that? Uh, everyone's pretty egocentric. Um, okay. The market is huge. Now, yeah. this isn't just like, oh, we, we sold it in the United States. Yay. Maybe we can sell it somewhere else. As fast as it shows up in front of you, it'll show up everywhere else. Also, and, and a lot of our um, economic politics, different countries are doing different things financially. So they have a little more of an impact now on how storytelling is done. So we're, we're, dealing, with, we're dealing with the necessity of speed, the increase of uh, low level or amateur or Base, base level competition. And then also we're trying to appease, and also they're trying to appease a very, very big, big money spending market now. Um, China is very powerful in terms of their, they, ha they can consume, they consume quite a bit. This is not cultural revolution pre-1973 China. This is, this is now, they've got iPhones. They've got billionaires. They consume content. Okay. You know, like okay. <laughs> they're killing it. India is making like these incredible, like the yeah. incredible films. Yeah. They're still three hours long. That's a short one. Yes, that's that is <laughs> a short, short one. They, yes. they still have musical musical moments. But if you watch stuff, like if you ever get get a chance on the internet, which allows to see what they were producing in like the seventies and eighties. Mm -hmm. Uh uh, not even right. close. 
then you can go to Netflix now, and they're giving you Indian superheroes. Oh yeah, um, yeah. Um, there's a one clip of this real this historical piece. It's mm -hmm. like three. It's like a one kingdom with like three brothers taking on these wild men, and the action is over the top. <laughs> like they get like like. The general, the one of the brothers, and all the soldiers gather. They put their shields together, turn into a giant ball, get shot out of a catapult into the other <laughs> army's force. <laughs> they explode. The, the the ball explodes. They're flying out, holding onto the shields, and they're just taking people out. It is physically impossible. I think it is it is insane, but it is probably one of the most enjoyable yeah. scenes. I'm like, now that's how action is done. So the international market is really producing a lot of phenomenal, phenomenal stuff that can be easily consumed by the world over. You got people doing subtitling for stuff. So like you can go to YouTube, and get subtitles. Um, you know, so modern storytelling is a byproduct of the modern age. You know, okay. a lot of influence. Right. The United States is no longer Hollywood is no longer running the show, or at least, oh. or should I say, they're in danger of the show. They're they're not the only game in town. How about them? they may be the best? They may still be the historically best game in town, but they're not the only game in town. Okay, I see. Oh wow. Didn't I was thinking about the uh, I guess the geopolitics of it all affecting modern having an effect on modern day storytelling. OK, I like that. Um, so I guess the thing is, now that we've addressed, you know, what's had an effect on it. Now we're just going to get to, you know, what's been what's a good modern day storytelling, what's bad and what's just been flat out different. So I know that we wanted to kind of go with the Marvel Cinematic Universe for the good and the bad. And it, it'll kind of. Um, be a little bit different for the category of different, but what was something that you noticed that was good storytelling, at least with the Marvel Cinematic Universe? Captain America, Winter Soldier. Oh, yeah. Probably the Gold best one. Winter. The Probably the best one they jumped. Okay. Hands down. All right. hands, hands down. The best one. Um, like, why? How? Uh, good story. Cohesive. They don't introduce anything that doesn't make any sense. There's very little moments of the MacGuffin or the uh, or the, or the, the the magic pill. It's like we're introduced to just and it's like here's the world, here's the situation, here's the problem, here's what we're dealing with, and then progressively we're reintroduced to a an old friend in Bucky Barnes, who's now the villain. You know, Captain America is struggling morally with it. He realizes that he's dealing with a slightly amoral organization. His the guy who has his back, Nick Fury, is kind of like he's a believer. At first, he's like, "This is what we have to do," only to find out maybe this is maybe too much power is corruptible. You know, yeah. and I don't know. There was there just wasn't these moments where. Oh, Captain America suddenly loses a fight with a guy who doesn't have superpowers. Captain America beats the guys who don't have superpowers. Cool. cool. Right? Mm -hmm. He struggles with the guy who has superpowers. Cool. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. Cool. Right. You know, the super spy is a super spy. <laughs> Remember when his right. truck gets gunned down by the by the Hydra agents? Right. And he goes, you know, they, Jim, uh, Sam Jackson's character, Nick Fury, goes full super spy with his spy right. truck. Oh, yeah. And he's like in a high speed chase. He gunning people down. He disappears in the sewers, shows up in the Captain America's yeah. house like, shh. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, even the opening just kind of lets you know where Captain America was. He's now re-enlisted as a federal, as a, as a, as a member of the United States military. Right. You know, frozen so, captain. Yeah. He's he's still a captain now. He's still right? a captain, right? So he shows up on his first mission as Captain America, and it even shows that um, this ain't World War Two anymore, buddy. This is no. the nineteen forties. We're not out yeah. here, you know, taking out the bad guys with our American flags. We're doing covert operations. This is a nighttime rescue. 
and everybody has their orders. And Natasha has her orders. She's going to extract specific information from the computer. And then Cap's like, but I thought this was just a straight up rescue mission. It's like, we're, it's the middle of the night, bro. <laughs> this is what the, the United States is no longer like some fun place that everybody wants to go to jumping into a war to save the world. We're an international superpower. We have spies. <laughs> This is a black ops mission, dog. <laughs> and he just wasn't ready for that. And they show you his discomfort with it. And as the story progresses on, that becomes more and more apparent that Captain America is like, uh, okay. this is not the America I left. This is a new place. There's spy like what is like in modern warfare is spying now. Yeah. It's like, dude, we had a cold war after that. We deal with terrorism. Yeah. Right. We don't we don't people don't Long term, uh, long term conflict is in small regions of the world. We don't, we don't do that World War Two stuff anymore. Everything's black ops, covert. It's inf- it's it's the age of information. And Cap is like language, language. <laughs> no cursing, please. Language. What's going on? That's my friend. It's like we don't care. <laughs> he's an assassin, but he's my friend. <laughs> he can be saved. And it's like, oh, is that the America you went to sleep on, Cap? It's a new place. And that's when Very Cap true. is like, I'm going to put on the old uniform, which is him saying, you know what? What I, being Captain America is not what you decided to be. It's who I've decided to be because I am Steve Rogers and I am Captain America. So he gets okay. his old uniform back. Falcon's like, I'm with you, Cap. <laughs> And they're like, well, we're going to find Bucky. 